Welcome to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining us. I've got Bob Cusin, uh, Biosculpture Technology, on the show with us today. Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad, glad to be here. All right. Listen, we've got some some real, real strong reasons for, for bringing you on the show. You've got technology and processes that's going to solve a lot of problems. So let me begin by giving you the platform or the floor to be able to tell us about uh, biosurgery, what your biosculpture, what, what you're doing there, how it's different from anything else, and how it solves multiple issues that people are dealing with every day. Super. Uh, what's exciting, what could never be done before was to take out the visceral fat that's inside your abdomen underneath the muscles. Up until this point, uh, we could cut it out very crudely, uh, taking out the omentum. But we could never take out the fat that acted like a gland in the, in the foot of the mesentery. That enters, puts its output directly into the liver. It, if you were hyperthyroid, if you take out the thyroid gland, you become normal uh, euthyroid. The disease goes away. In the same manner, if you remove the visceral fat that secretes a resistant, an antagonist to insulin, that's what causes type 2 diabetes. If you reduce the size of that gland, you improve diabetes right off the bat. Patient gets off the table, loses some weight, has a healthier lipid pro profile, and has more energy. We have a device that can thin out the mesentery, take out the fat of the mesentery, something that could never be done before, and it can be done on a laparoscopically, in a minimally invasive uh, manner. So basically, we have turned, the, the company was directed towards handling fat, particularly liposuction for years. We have a liposuction device. Uh, years ago, my first patent, uh, created the power-assisted liposuction market with a license to Johnson & Johnson, mentor uh, Ethicon. Created a half billion dollar a year market. Now the current device can do what couldn't be done before, taking out that visceral fat as a treatment of type 2 diabetes and obesity. And what's particularly nice about it is there's no cutting into the bowel, there's no leaving behind a foreign body, there's no creating a digestive cripple, and it's a, a, an outpatient procedure that can be done in about an hour and a half, similar to a lap band, uh, about the same scope as a lap band procedure. But this is a procedure that will be a permanent procedure because you have taken out part of, that, part of that gland. If somebody's morbidly obese, you might have to repeat the procedure a few times. But for somebody who's just moderately obese, one procedure should be enough. We don't really know what the exact multiple of after procedure fat loss will be, from animal work, we expect the multiple will be seven or time, seven times, seven to ten times. So in other words, if we take out three or four liters of fat, eight to ten pounds, we still have the multiple of body fat after that outside the stomach to be lost anywhere between three and ten times that. Wow. That's, we don't know what the multiple will be. If it's a lower multiple, the company will simply make more money, and it's still a safer procedure. There's no cutting into the bowel. Uh, no leaving behind a foreign body, no uh, no risks of fistula or bleeding, the same kind of things that you would get with uh, doing a Ruan Y bowel, you know, bypass. And there's no foreign body there. So it's, And there's no stitches in the stomach. So the patient afterwards can eat a normal meal, which is nice. They'll just be less hungry because part of the bad hormones that the visceral fat puts out is relin and neuropeptide Y. Those are the most potent uh, hunger hormones made. So if you remove those, as well as allow the sugar to go to the brain and to the muscle, the patient won't be hungry. You know, you have physiologically reduced the desire for hunger. And if the patient eats for psychological reasons, the fat will go to the body, not to the, not, not to the, into, into the stomach as visceral fat. Uh, so you'll be able to just take it out with a liposuction as opposed to, you know, getting type 2 diabetes from it. What a breakthrough. So, yeah, it really is. You know, this is, we, we've got, at this point in time, we've got eight uh, patents on both the method and the device. We've prototyped this device and two other ones, which target small and large volume liposuction, because uh, it's basically a similar type technology 
what lets us take it out in a way that couldn't be done before is the tube within a tube technology. It's particularly adaptive for a laparoscopic procedure. You obviously can't stroke any kind of rigid rod back and forth in the stomach without rupturing a liver or spleen. But this is a, a tube within a sheath, and what happens is the globules of fat gets aspirated as the tube moves back and forth in the sheath without any forward motion. So it's a safe procedure. You just basically put an, an inch and a half slot wherever you want the tissue removed. And the advantage of a laparoscopic procedure is we pressurize the abdomen to make some space to work. So literally you have some air pressure pushing the fat into the tube so you can use thinner tubes and smaller holes. So it's really very cool. And, and uh, we believe that we'll be able to do for obesity uh, management and type 2 uh, diabetes treatment what LASIK did for vision correction. Make a safer procedure, democratize it, get it out there and really help. Because there are 2 billion people around the world who are, over, who are obese. And just in the U.S. alone, there are 20, 20 to 25 million uh, type 2 diabetics. So there are a lot of people who can really benefit from this help. And diabetes is the leading cause of uh, kidney failure requiring dialysis, uh, amp more than half of the non-traumatic amputations, and a frequent cause of blindness. So it's a horribly expensive and doesn't just shorten your life, it really reduces the quality of your life. I agree. And this, now you, you'd mentioned testing it on animals. Are, have you done testing on humans already? No, we haven't. We haven't. Uh, we, we, we will be there in approximately 40 weeks. That's soon. That's very that soon. Is, that is soon. The, uh, the nice thing about the technology is we'll be able to essentially treat beer bellies and muffin tops without an assurance of an afterweight uh, weight loss basically get paid to remove, to treat the beer belly and the, the, uh, the muffin top, and then just observe the patients afterwards to see how much weight they lose afterwards. I mean, one of the things patients would come in, particularly guys, because we, we get, you know, basically these muffin tops, and most of the, the, the fat is actually in our stomach. Right. So, so if a guy comes in and he's complaining about an abdomen, you really can't do that much with liposuction because it's really there afterwards. Right. If you take out some of the fat inside the stomach, you can get a cosmetic improvement. And while you get the immediate cosmetic improvement, which you can see with your eyes when you get off the table, when the patient gets off the table, you can take some blood tests, and right, right there you can see some immediate results with less angiotensin, which lowers blood pressure, less resistance, which gives you a more normal blood sugar, lowers the blood sugar a more lipid pro, uh, normal lipid profile. Even psoriasis and eczemas. eczema comes from the uh, inflammatory uh, cytokines that the, that visceral fat puts out. There's a higher incidence of cancers and, uh, and autoimmune diseases in people with a lot of visceral fat. So all of that, all of that can change instantly. And we'll, we'll observe those patients for two years and see what the results. And then as we see whatever the multiple is, then we can make the claims and then we can go after, you know, getting an insurance reimbursement for the procedure when you have proved that you get a long-term effect. Wow, that's that's amazing. What, let me jump in with just a couple of common sense questions sure. I'm sure everybody's going to have. Um, recovery time from the the operation, what's your, what's your thoughts on that? It should be very fast. I mean, because the bottom line is it's a liposuction-style technology, except you're using you know, a tube within a tube within the abdomen, but it's a laparoscopic procedure, it's a short procedure, and you're basically not doing anything brutal. You're not, cut, you know, you're not putting staples in the stomach. You're not cutting out the omentum. You're not doing a bypass. Uh, you're not putting a foreign body in. So it should be a very fast recovery. I mean, the patient should be able to go to work the next day or the day afterwards. Uh, the, the worst thing that you can anticipate from this procedure would be that the patient might, the, the bowel might go to sleep. So the patient might have to stay on clear fluids. So they stay home the next day. Might even have to keep them overnight in the hospital. Worst scenario if, if the bowel totally goes to sleep. But that's not anticipated since that usually doesn't happen with a lap band procedure. And this is actually of, a, of the same order of scope. 
What about the, once, once you have this procedure, is there something where you would have the procedure again over a period of time if somebody doesn't follow the new eating habits? And, ah, or or how, how does that work? Beauty. Well, that's the beauty. Uh, if the patient's less hungry, they're more likely to eat less. And that's what you're doing. You, you're reducing the hunger hormones mm -hmm. and you're letting the sugar go into the muscles and the brain. So the patient will be less hungry. And as I said, if they do eat for psychological reasons, uh, they'll be satisfied with that food because the sugar will go to their brain. They won't have the, you know, the brain fog that you get from the diabetes with the sugar being blockaded from going into the cells. Uh, so the bottom line is we don't know how many times it might be repeated. For somebody moderately obese, probably once will be enough. Somebody's morbidly obese, probably would have to do it more than once. Because I mean, somebody if somebody's more than 100 pounds overweight and you're getting a multiple that might be 7 to 10 and you're taking out 8 pounds, yes, you might have to do it more than once. So uh, a, a person normal or uh, over, overweight in this o obesity, say minor obesity, is anywhere between 10 and say 40 at the most pounds for, for the mid-range. Uh, you're saying that that would be more than likely a life-changing event that occurs once. More than likely, yes, sir. Okay. Wow. That's, uh, and that's certainly what the animal result uh, suggests. I mean, if you take out the visceral fat in, uh, you know, in, in pigs, dogs, or cats, uh, they lose huge multiples of body fat, basically, and they're cured. Diabetic strains, the diabetes goes away. Hypertensive strains, the, the hypertension goes away. So we expect a similar, t as dramatic effect in the humans. There's no reason why you wouldn't. We already know that if you, if you take out a mental fat, when you do a lap band, the patient does better. If you take out a mental fat, when you do a bypass procedure, if it's a not particularly aggressive bypass procedure, the patient does better. If it's an aggressive bypass, well, all the food's winding up in the toilet anywhere. If, anyway, you can't really do much better. But the bottom line is we know that works already in humans, and we know the mental fat is less metabolically active than the mesenteric fat, which is the fat we will be taking out. Uh, why do we know that? Because you get the ulcerative colitis and Crohn's diseases. It's uh, the mesentery is much more pronounced and uh, involved than is the omentum. So we know it to be a more metabolically active. So we, we expect that dramatic result. Uh, and the wonderful thing about it is if the procedure does need to be repeated, it's a small procedure. You're, you're not cutting into the bowel, not leaving behind a foreign body and you're not creating digestive cripples. I, I get it. How, um, this is obviously going to require um, investment in equipment and technology, let alone the location, because you always have to have a clean location to do this a test on humans. Are you self-funding this, or are you, are you taking on investors from outside in, in a variety of forms? Uh, at, at this at this point, yes, we are taking an event. We're still a private company. We are taking out uh, we are taking out uh, investors right now, and we will open some centers of excellence. First one's probably going to be in New York. And the nice thing about these centers is you, there'll be granted centers, and you can cross sell bariatric treatment, and liposuction, take the fat out, put it back in, and cre correct wrinkles. Because one of the nice things about fat is it, it is body fat is a fifty times better source of stem cells than bone marrow. And it sure hurts a hell of a lot less to take out, and everybody's got a little bit of fat somewhere that they want to get out. So the nice thing about these centers is you really don't leave any money on the table. You've got a bariatric treatment, you've got a liposuction treatment, and for the skinny people, you've basically got wrinkle correction. And down the road, we'll be collecting this tissue and putting it into people like me who are triathletes who can use some cartilage in their knees you know, uh, so it, it's it's a wonderful source of stem cells to do some good. And we all know that stem cells is where medicine is going in the next decade. So we kind of get in on it at the uh, on the ground floor with one of the best places to be, one of the best sources and a source that patients are readily willing to part with. This is disruptive technology processes and you're definitely a disruptive person, Bob. If, 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 if I missed anything, bring it out now, but I, I want to have you again on the show so that we can talk more about the drill downs, the effects, the, and, and, and what the results of, you've seen in human trials. But please, if there's anything else I missed, bring it out now. 
Sure. As, as soon as we have, you know, have done some clinicals, I'd love to come back on the show. We will be opening, you know, we, we, we will be launching production of the three devices. The EVL device is the one that does the miracle we're just talking about. And the first branded center we plan to open in New York, but we want to open centers around the world. So we can basically get this out fast. The, the nice thing about being able to have an immediate cosmetic result I, while you're waiting for the long-term physiologic treatment result is you basically fund your studies as you go. And, and that's a very unusual pathway uh, to be able to do something and have an immediate benefit while you wait for the longer term benefit that will ultimately take this into the insurance reimbursement market, which then gives you a totally recession, you know, proof uh, revenue stream. I, I agree. I, I would invite you to open one up down in here in Dallas. There's lots of biscuits and gravy that's taken its toll on a few people. Yeah, Dallas is one, definitely one of the centers, which uh, you know, one of the cities that deserves a center. Absolutely. Bob, thanks for being a guest on the show. Thank you so much for having me on. My, I enjoyed it. My Thank pleasure. You. You've been watching CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and link up with us on our YouTube, uh, YouTube site. Thank you. Thank you. That was great.